Another amazing, awesome episode. Oh, stop it, Trey. <laughs> yeah, hey guys. Hey guys. Have you ever said that before in your life? Yes, I do that every time when I start. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a deck tech. I've got Trey. This is why I'm not normally invited. No. <laughs> We've got George Rogers, the UK national champion, on with us, and he's going to talk about his absolutely awesome Fi deck. The first Fi deck to win a nationals, is that right? Unless I'm probably got that wrong, but I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think it I is. Think this one. Well, we're going to yeah. go with it. So, the very first Fi deck to win a UK uh, a nationals in general uh, took everybody by surprise, especially a lot of us in the UK. Um, right. You should our what's hot, what's not is um, definitely uh, not representative of what actually happened because <laughs> i think we didn't rate fi high enough but here he is george with his absolutely amazing uh fi deck george congrats thank you very much uh i think the person who was least expecting to win this one is definitely me uh oh, no. <laughs> i made a bet i made a bet that if i won it i'd um i'd get a phoenix flame tattooed on me oh uh, yeah you gotta do it now yeah you, have you where got... are you gonna get it tattooed I was going to get it on the side of my arm there. Oh, that'd be good. Gonna... Yeah, yeah that'd, be, that'd be really cool. I can hook you up, man. I know a guy Yeah, let us know when you do it. We'll we'll record it and put it up as a YouTube short. We'll get like a thousand views. It'd be great. Yeah, we'll get we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get out. We'll, we'll get a lot out of it for you out milk of your me as much as you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And Trips jo- well, Trips joined yeah, us as well because Trip, you are also a massive fire man as well, and you were super keen to jump on this. Yeah. I'm a Fi man. Uh, that is what I've been doing for a bit. So I thought I would join, talk about Fi with George. But George, uh, I think for the first thing, we're going to run through the deck, but you've chosen to go full Kadachis. I, th- I think that's one of the the things that stands out about your deck. You haven't got Ember Blade in the list at all, right? And I, I, I know this has been a bit of a debate on the Fi Discord. Well, not the Fi Discord, but the Fi page on the Discord. What 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 was your thinking here? Like just to not run Ember Blade at all and just go straight for Kadachis? What what was your your reasoning around that decision before we get stuck right into the deck type? So, so the best part about Fi is is mask and momentum, right? Like getting multiple triggers on mask and momentum and just just like forcing people to interact with your deck by blocking. And Kadachis just give you the most chain links, and so higher chain links, more mask triggers. So. And- you- Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because the main time you would play Ember Blade, I guess, would be against um, uh, Oldham and Icelander, or that's where people have been playing Ember Blade. And did you just decide that that wasn't an issue for you? You're just going to run Kadachis into those heroes as well? Yeah, I- Icelander, I-, I run a lantern, so I already run. So that's where my AB slots in, because um, weapons aren't amazing against Icelander in general because of hyperthermia. And Oldham, I-, I think Kadachis actually do more damage than Ember Blade. Yeah, and I think the Oldhams in the UK meta, especially, are running. Uh, they're not running crown any anyway at the moment, or and shield. They tend to run. Well, some of the better ones were running like stalagmite and crown of providence. Sorry, not crown of. Steel. Yeah, I played so, three old hymns that were on crown and rampart, and the, the, the way the easiest way to look at that is they trade a blue and they they get the crown and rampart to block my two kadachis, and I attack with my two kadachis, and I also have a resource left over which I can use, and they can't use their resource. So I end up winning that trade every time they do that. Yeah, that's a really cool way of thinking of it. Yeah. Okay, hey, hey, Mitch, do you want to scroll back up to the top and we'll have a look at the, the cards in the deck? Cool. Do you want to just generally talk about uh, your sort of game plan with the deck, George, and sort of what you're trying to do in sort of... Uh, obviously, it's different depending on what hero you're up against, but what's the kind of main philosophy of the deck that you've been playing and what you're trying to achieve with it? Well, I, I wrote a like a really basic cyborg guide down about like what I do in every matchup, and there was a there was a one word that kept popping up in most of the matchups, which was race. Right. You're you're, you're just <laughs> you're just sending it every turn. You're looking at what the maximum damage you can prevent provide is, and just firing it forward to them. Try and make all the mass triggers as awkward as possible, be it for a really low number or a really high number, and then try and get as many of those as possible as well. Hmm. Seems sensible. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with a a fine ninja deck, I've I've noticed as well. There's um there's a couple of cards that I've seen here that are quite unexpected and from one from or surprising basically in general. 
when you when you see him, you can sort of think, I get it. But I would love to get your your take on why you decided to put them in. So I think the easiest one, I think, to start off with is Ancestral Empowerment. I might be wrong here because I don't play a lot of Fi. But Ancestral Empowerment, I can see it being a really, really good card. But I think initially people were trying to put it in and I don't see it pay, paying off as well. But obviously, what what's your thoughts on Ancestral Empowerment? It's it's a cantrip, it's just a free damage. Yeah. Um, it just replaces itself. You don't have to put it on the mass trigger if, you, if it doesn't line up very well. But obviously, you can. When you put it on the mass trigger, you can push through with additional damage. The, ex the existence of it in the deck is also really relevant because when people, if you come in for, say, a brand for free on your mass trigger, people will be hesitant just to block it for free, knowing full well that Ancestral Empowerment is a huge punish in that situation. And your brand may just natively deal four damage because of its existence. So just, it just like increases damage to all your cards just by being in the deck. Okay. okay. Yeah, and it blocks three as well, which is kind of tidy sometimes. Yep. Um, like George was saying, you get the Ancestral Empowerment out on the, the mask and you're drawing two cards. You could just see the, the face of your opponent uh, just sort of melt into sadness and it, it's, it, it, it can just break people <laughs> yeah. when they... When they uh, like block, think they've just blocked it out, and you're just coming over and getting the draw. Uh, it, it's just a really tidy card. Mm. Uh, yeah. I've got it on my list, and I think it's 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 very strong. But just on ancestral empowerment, as we're talking about it, because because George, you you run um quite a few like non ninja cards like rabble and e strike. Do you ever find that the the ancestral is a, a bit awkward, or is there just nearly always something you can you can plonk it on? To, it can to be awkward. Um, like it definitely can be a card which hasn't got much use. But uh, it has, it's got a free block in the bottom corner. So mm. if you get presented a hand where you can't use it, you just block with it. Or you arsenal it, you know. You're absolutely fine arsenal a card in this deck. So it can be a premium arsenal situation. Yeah. Cool. So moving on to uh, the brand of Syndicate, yellow. Get red. Why yellow? So yellow brand until maybe two days before it was double strike. Right. And then laying in bed thinking about like how i can optimize the list and i was like wow maybe yellow brand is just double strike but more damage you know right so so double strike um it's just it's two damage with shukas it's three damage brand in nearly all situations is three damage and then with shukos it's four damage because of the fact it gives you an extra tonic chain link to trigger five because you don't trigger five very often in this deck right Okay. You don't have enough Draconic to trigger it consistently. Brand just makes you trigger it way more consistently. I can see a lot of very happy people who are going to look at this thing and go, Colin, that's good. I can easily put this <laughs> in rather than trying to search for a double strike. Um, yeah. <laughs> just on brand before we move on, because a lot of fire lists are running like all nine, and my list ran all nine. But, that, but that's because I run Spreading Flames, and a lot of fire players are still on Spreading Flames. Again, it's a. Uh, it's not in your list, and I think that's you know you probably don't want to be running nine brands if you're not running spreading flames because you're not going to get enough value. And I guess the exclusion of spreading flames there is because of the low draconic count in the deck, right? Or is it yeah. something you experimented with and you just didn't think it was having the effect you wanted to see in the deck? It just wasn't doing what you need in the deck. Um, even if it was a situationally one for four because it hits something in, after in the chain link, it didn't hit a breakpoint itself. It itself wasn't a one for four, so it didn't. It didn't it wasn't awkward for mass triggers, or um, it wasn't really awkward for anything. And a one cost in the deck has to really do something important to, to justify its position in the deck. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. I'm going to move on to even bigger than that. I get it, but just wanted to get your thoughts on it. So, so even bigger than that, on a low blue ratio deck, does seem a bit strange because you don't get to quite consistently Kadachi with it at the same time. Hmm. But, but you have a lot of uh, zero for threes in the deck as well. So what you can end up doing is just coming with a zero for three. Then you're even bigger than that. You find a four, uh, a four or five for zero afterwards. So there are loads of targets that are just higher than a three, even bigger than that. So it looks a bit strange initially because of the low blue. But then when you actually play it out in the hands, it's it's playable in nearly every hand. Mm, I imagine the op uh, three is the big is kind of the big deal really as well because it's. It's like looking for like you've got three cards to sort of search for to, in order to find the one that you want. Yeah, you find the one you want, you put the one on top of it, which is you want to draw from your mask and momentum as well. And it just has sorts of things used with like say Rabble, Art of War, uh, Mask Momentum, E Strike. There's there's lots of things in the deck on top of just the um 
finding the card specifically to get go again, they just make it an absolutely insane card in the deck. Yeah, and we skipped over it, but E Strike is actually quite an interesting card too. Like I was chatting with uh, Tom Hall, who said that uh, he didn't really like seeing E Strike when he's playing his Olden deck against Fi because it's like a really strong two card hand. But have you found ways to use E Strike aggressively as well as part of a long chain link? Yeah, so I, I run Soaring Strikes and then Snapdragons and even bigger than that. So I've got lots of ways to give E Strike go again. And then E Strike go again is a crazy card because it's just a five for zero that, that fixes yeah. your hand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really, really, really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then it's also got the flex of where it can just be a finisher where you just have it and you just draw a card and then you just ask all the card that you draw or you just come in for seven if you need to. It's just, it's just so flexible in a deck. Like, I have a love hate relationship with it because it can be the most bricky card in a deck. Hmm. But at the same time, it's also the best card in the deck of times. Yeah. So. And, worth, and, it blo- uh, and it blocks well. And so. it blocks for three. <laughs> it blocks yeah. for three. That's it. That's it. Um, I'm going to move on down. I think Lava Burst, Mount, Mountain Anger. They're, 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 they're crazy cards. They're really good. So uh, I imagine Mountain Anger is there for simply the on hit effect. It has a four and it has an on hit effect. Yeah. it's you're, you're inclined to block it because it becomes a one for five if not blocked. Which also creates further problems with on hit effects and later in the chain, and it's a break point on its own. Mm. Yeah, I love mounting anger because it itself is a four, and it makes it can make another three a four. It's just so good on the mask turn because you can come in with a Kadachi, they take it. You you come in with mounting anger, and then they want to block that, um, and then you can so you get the block early, and then you can go off for another three on it. Or if they don't block mounting anger. They then make the next one even harder to block. Oh, it's just such a nice card for fixing those threes. We're well, making those threes fours. It's just so satisfying. Mm. It's really good. I really like my anger. I can imagine Lava Burst in this deck is something that actually this is 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 Lava Burst one of the big things as well as well, as Salt the Wind as well. We'll throw them in. Those two are the kind of the re like the big reasons of this deck's sort of power level. I imagine. Yeah. Because those cards are really often zero for six or sevens. Um, That's wild. Which is just absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, and but... I really like Lava Burst as well. Um, I've had matches with Fi where I've just had a hand that doesn't require any resources to play, and it's pushing out like bonkers damage because you just go zero cost, zero cost, zero cost Lava Burst at the end, and it just feels. Feels broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've done the 20 plus damage hands where you look at your pitch zone and there's nothing in it. Yeah. <laughs> Days, man. Back in the last year's Briar games, yeah, when we're just playing ball lightnings and ravenous rabbles and God knows what, and you haven't pitched, it, you haven't pitched anything. Yeah, wow. it's great. <laughs> um, uh, ravenous rabble. Um, that is a card i expect to see in the deck but also a card that i could imagine is something else what's your why did you put that in there's only nine blues in the deck oh that's a good reason (laughs) (laughs) there's 51 hits (laughs) but isn't the generic um thing sometimes a little does it a bit clunky when you don't have the draconic or at least ninja because there's a few less targets i suppose and no one hit yeah so being just a basic generic is not the best but it's a innate go again so it plays around like hyperthermia mm-hmm. um it can just you can just play it and uh, it's a four a lot of the time so it just it just ticks the boxes which you really want to tick which is just go again zero four you know <laughs> that's what you want to play <laughs> hard maps <laughs> do you have any <laughs> Did you have any major misses during Nats with hitting a blue off the top of it? Do you remember? I hit a blue in the final. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> that wasn't great. But then I was I was really far ahead in the final anyway. So it's yeah. like it just it just needed to be a card. It's like whatever it is, doesn't matter. It's a it's a two, it's fine. It's enough. Yeah, it's zero <laughs> zero cost for most of the time that um with with unconditional go again. And like you'd you'd run that if you if you could and sometimes it misses but it's, it should be really rare with this deck yeah um, it's really really infrequent it misses 
before we move on, I just wanted to touch on the Phoenix Flame. And I think we could actually talk about Phoenix Flame and Rise from the Ashes together. Because I've, I've heard people say it's interesting that you run three copies of Rise from the Ashes, but only one copy of Phoenix Flame. So there's no uh, way to essentially rise and then later fetch a second Phoenix Flame. That's just not not possible. So I was wondering if you could talk about why you decided to run just the one Phoenix Flame and, and also why you decided to then run three Rise with just one Phoenix Flame. So in the same way we're talking about how Ravel's great because it's a zero for four go again. That's why Rise is great as well. It's a zero <laughs> for four go again. Except this zero for four go again enhances other cards in your hand. So we were saying about Mountain Anger's break points. You what you you just make Mountain Anger even harder to block. You know, mm. um Soul Bead Strike is another the deck, which is a uh, not a guaranteed go again. You can make that one really awkward to block as well. Because no if you've got Snap Dragons up and you come in for a rise into Soul Bead, your opponent doesn't really want to block it for seven, because it takes up their takes a lot of their hand, and you can still give it a go again anyway. Um So it's it's just a it's really solid in the deck because of the in fact, it just hits breakpoints on other cards in the deck which you want to hit breakpoints on. And um, it's really, really often a 0-4 on its own. Yeah, and I guess you, you said earlier that you're not always, um, you know, fetching a Phoenix Flame on your turn anyway. So, you know, it's it's you're not always going to get that double Phoenix Flame if you had two anyway. So I guess it makes sense to just run the one Phoenix and use Rise. Yeah, outside <laughs> of a brand for Simnaclaw turn, you, you don't often actually pull your Phoenix Flame out. Yeah, no, and yeah, and it's a zero cost of three, right? Um, it's pretty pretty sweet for all the on hits. Like even things like you know, I, it, like you said, it's it's just pushing more damage through, and it's making those break points really good. Um, it's the one card that I saw in your deck, and I just, just said to myself, "Why the hell am I not running that?" In my deck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 it's just just tried it out a few times. Like, wow, this card is insane in this deck. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the best cards in the deck. Very much so. So, I get Rising Resentment. We've talked about Salt the Wounds. Uh, Red Snatch, I kind of get it. Like, that's a pretty... Uh, Red Snatch and Ninja is... Uh, they're good. They've been partners for, a, well, since yeah. the inception yeah. of the game. So, um, that, that's easy to understand. Blue Snatch. I'll show you what. I Blue Snatch. It's got two attacks, so you can find it from even bigger than that. So... Uh, when you Kodachi, you can search, you can find Blue Snatch if it's the only hit that's available to you, which is always great to have. It's another finisher that has to be blocked. You want people to block you because you're you're just really aggressive deck and you want people to be inclined to block always against you. Um, so Snatch is another one that you play at the end of a chain, even if it's a blue one, like, oh, I guess I've got to block that one as well. Mm. And it can still hit really weird breakpoints through the Shukos because Shukos is your second card that has two or less base. So you can go Phoenix Flame into Snatch. And it comes in for free. And you're on a lot of water, or it's been Mountain Anger. It can be four. It, it, it just you can still really easily get it pumped up high enough that it's a huge threat, and it's a blue. Yeah, yeah. and you, as you said with your sideboard, you know a lot of the time you're racing, right? So you're not like a, I've seen a lot of people put um, try to like basically force three blocks into their blue slot essentially, so they have a bit more bulk in the deck. Yeah. If, if you're racing, why why not run something that has a draw effect on it? Like that, if you play out, it's going to be pretty. It's going to at least reset. Uh, or sorry, it's going to at least get a card into your arsenal and set you up for a five card turn next turn, or force another card from their hand, which is a yeah, block of equipment, right? Because if it was like a just a generic zero for two that blocks for free in that yeah. slot instead, and you just you end your turn with it, say it's like the wind of eternity, your opponent just takes two and moves on with their life. When it's snatch. You can draw their armor. You can draw another card from their hand. It's just it's a really good way to end it if you have to, the additional blues and you have to play a blue in that turn. Mm. Obviously, you don't want to play a blue. You just you just could act you with it. But in the very rare situation you have more than one blue in your hand, you you, you play snatch. Fair enough. Fair enough. Soaring strike again. This is me being a complete. Um, no, I've never made a fire deck. I've been many other times but you drafted so, Fi once remember? yeah you put so in strike <laughs> when you're drafting it because you know yeah. pretty good but um so in strike in a cc deck is it um i i suppose in my head i'm trying to think there's zero i'm looking for as many zero costs but it's not it's not normally run it's 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 a really a good inclusion and it for this deck and i think 
Yeah, George, what, definitely why, why made did the you, right decision putting it in. Yeah, yeah. why did you it's put not it in? Normally run, no. Um, so it comes in for four. So yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's take that one off. Yeah. It comes in for four. Oh, it's got a really relevant on hit uh, with like hitting like soul beads and snatches, mm-hmm. uh, loud burst and salt the wounds. It just hits so many cards. Sometimes it hits tech tempo. Um, so it, it's it's you're really inclined to block it because once you know what the deck's doing. If I do, if I start a chain off by going picture blue, soaring strike, and I've still got two cards in my hand, you really don't want to let that hit because that could be an e strike on getting give and go again. It could be a snatch coming in with go again. Um, well, yeah. It's really scary when it's at the start of a chain and it comes in. Why do people not run it then? Like, why is this not a common card to run in Fi deck? Um, I guess the the standard Fi up until this point is heavy draconic, so right. they're running. Um, Ronin Renegades and Lava Vein Loyalties, um, and and they're they're not that they're, they're, you finish games with five, you never use your Snapdragons because you have so much um, go again naturally in in the heavy Draconic build that there's no need for to give anything go again with Soaring Strike. But the kind of the beauty of this deck is you're including some really high quality cards like Snatch and E Strike that become absolutely busted when you give them go again, right? Like that's why Briar has been so strong with the ability to give some of these these really strong cards go again from her hero ability. And that's kind of I guess what Soaring Strike is doing. It's it's making cards that are really, really good even even better by adding that go again onto them. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Thank you, Trip. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um yeah, we're moving on to Soulbeat Strike. That's um I think they're that's a wild include. Clearly not, because you've obviously smashed out UK Nats with it. But explain more about your reasoning and why you put the Soul Beat Strikes blue in as well. The blue, for the same reason, a snatch. It's yeah. a two it, if it's got an on hit effect as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it blocks, this one even blocks for free. It's amazing in blue. So it's like the best blue in the deck. Um, yeah. Soul Beat Strike red. Uh, Oh, I guess great. It, it, your opponent gets <laughs> so confused on how to deal with Soul Beat Strike Red when it gets played. Because if you do a Mass Trigger and then you play a Soul Beat Strike and you've still got a card in your hand, they're, they're sitting there thinking, yeah, if I if I block this, another four breakpoint, another awkward card. So it's going to either take a piece of equipment or two cards. He's still got another card in hand. He can just answer it. Or it could be a Lava Burst, you know, and I'm like, he's going to Lava Burst me afterwards. It's going to be even worse. And it blocks for free. This card's insane in the deck. Ninja, so you can ancestral it. Oh, it's just so good. Oh, I love, right. that'll be strike red. I love it. I love the. I can see the pure enthusiasm of this. It's like Argh. it was like a. It was like one that I was like, I just put. I was just putting different cards in and playing few games to see how they feel. And I put the red soul beast. I was like, oh my god, this card's so good in the deck. <laughs> it's that eureka moment, isn't it? That feeling of like when you put when you just try something out and it's just outperforming more than you gave it credit for it, yeah i can imagine the excitement yeah it's it was so good like you can start turns with a soul bead strike and your opponent blocks it for six and you're like oh yeah <laughs> that, was, that was a zero for six <laughs> <laughs> that's fair man that's fair um is there anything else you want to add on that trip i was just going to move on to the uh, no mass. no i think you covered it really well you yeah. just uh, just move on to take the tempo, I guess. Cause yeah, it's a really uh, interesting card. I hate this card. I thought this card was <laughs> when I first saw it was trash, and maybe when I first saw it, I was like, eh, "You need to hit for three. It's so many conditions. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's the old typical spoilers getting thrown out. People look at, and now I hate it. I hate it with a passion <laughs> from my games I've been playing up against it. I can see why you put this in, but was there another, was this a card that you always wanted to include into this deck? Was this always part of the plan of that when you were going to run in Kadachi's? When was the uh, Eureka moment with this card? This card wasn't in the deck until two days before. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it joined with Brand. Him and Brand were, uh, were good buddies. This was a scar for a scar. Um, All right. Until a few days before okay and um we thought the people i was, I was testing it with we were thinking you can, we could go up to one we could go to nine blues it was on eight blues and three scars i'm like well we can go over nine blues and then you can run take tempo which is just a, such a good card in the the mirror mm-hmm. it's another free we had to trade three two blocks for three three blocks it's another good finisher and um the must block on it is just 
another great great thing. It's a good two card hand. It just ticks so many boxes. Um, it was really once once you included it, the the, the power of that level of the deck just absolutely skyrocketed. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It feels it feels like unless I've got the interactions wrong, if this does hit, even if you don't get like a a go again off it or you know whatever, um, it feels like that's an addition. It's a bit, it's an additional card in your hand for next turn, isn't it? So. Yeah, it's, it's right basically down. you're almost like that Lexi with has two arsenals and four card hands. You're like, well, this my arsenal is called the Banished Stone and the Arsenal, and I draw four cards. I'm, I imagine the that that's just opening up it's, like it's a world so of good. pain <laughs> for the next like turn. Cards, right? Um, could actually could actually take ten for a six card hand next turn. It's yeah. Difficult. Days, oh my days. And if you've got six cards, you're you're even quite likely to get phoenix up on that turn like even if it's you just draw you, you draw yeah. two blues and you're like okay well i'll just fetch a phoenix even if i don't have the draconic and it's, oh. it's so good so good data <laughs> 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 tempo was just <laughs> would you go up to three george if you were making it again no um too many finishes in the deck then i think um, yeah between the lava burst the snatches the salts and the tete tempos you can have some bricky hands if they all come together um and for all of those, the least what the one I'm least happy with is Tech Tempo. I think the others are better. Mm. Okay, we'll end on this last one. Winds of Eternity. Now, why? Um, I uh, generally why? I uh, I feel so, like there's got to be something with a non-hit effect, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, so why winds? Winds of Eternity is the the, the naked two zero. <laughs> Lot three blue in the deck. It right. can be any of them. There's there's no ever like there's no secret reason why it was wins. The only reason it was wins is like it's my favorite art of all of those yeah. cards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's like it's the it's the prettiest one, right? So put that one in. Yeah, exactly. It's the nicest art. So Although I um I did actually get I had to judge call myself because of Winds of Eternity. So <laughs> when I submitted my deck, I submitted Winds of Eternity. I'd actually been running Fluster Fist. Um. Um, and obviously, to my image, it's just like, well, they're the same card, but they're not. You can't just write Winds of Eternity when you're running Fluster Fist. So, yeah. <laughs> to start of round one, Judge Corbo says, so I think I've something in a legal deck. <laughs> All right. So, let me go and quickly change it. So, just, so just for clarity, then, uh, Winds of Eternity, does, does it have to be a block three? Is that kind of like your open ended, zero cost blue, whatever card that people who want to pick this up and. It may not have any copies of Winds of Eternity. It can be a Fluster Fist, which is a rare. That could be a Fluster Fist or a rare. It's... It can also be a Fine Center, but that's also a Majestic. So. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. So is th- that's blue blo- a blue attack, that's zero, Any anything that fits that criteria. If it blocks three, then, you know, for anyone and that wanted to build this. So you can find it from even bigger than that. Okay. Brill, brill, brill. Um, yeah, that's... Pretty cool. Drip, is there anything you want? I mean, this is your main board. This is something you throw in every single time, um, and including Art of Wars and stuff like that. I just yeah. think it's a really good build. Like, I think that um, it's very different to what five players, well, what the five decks that I was seeing being put out. And I think you like, you know, it's an aggro deck at the, at the end of the day, but I think you've built an aggro deck in a really interesting way and, and, and using the interactions of even bigger than that and soaring strike on some of these. These these other cards that don't have go again. It, I I did come up against George in CC. We played them in draft, but I I would not have wanted to come up against this deck with my fire list because I just think um, you can put on so much pressure and so many on hits that I didn't have in mind. It just seems like a really strong strong build. Um, but yeah, should we move to the sideboard? Yeah, I was just gonna say, is this um is this everything that you, this is a main board and everything, George? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the sixty that I present to to most. Characters. Oh, we didn't. Um, sorry. So, hey, we should scroll back up to the top. Just, just briefly, um, George, just to chat about Art of War. Like, I, I, uh, how did you find Art of War across the tournament? Because for me, it's like it, it can be incredibly good, and sometimes you just feel like you're throwing re- like cards and resources away, and you're not drawing what you want to draw. Did Did you have good experiences with Art of War during the tournament? Do you run like it seems to be in your main deck? Do you ever cut it or anything like that? It was. Absolutely incredible for me the entire yeah. <laughs> because there's so few misses in the whole deck. It yeah. just it just when when your deck is really like most of the cards say the exact same thing, which is mm. just a attack with go again. That's cost nothing. Uh, it it, re- it really rarely misses. It, it mm. just generally does the exact same 
something in every time, and it's just so fantastic because it just makes everything. It's what pushed the deck over the edge yeah. because you because you're going five or six wide really often each turn. Gaining five damage for basically free just is obscene. And I guess you're running quite a low blue count, so there's very little risk of drawing into like something you don't want to see. And yeah. I guess even if you do, you can Kadachi. So yeah, um, yeah. And it's really obviously really really good against. Uh, you can do it in a reactor step as well to get the plus one for a mask of momentum trigger. Ah uh, yeah, I killed so someone with uh, Phoenix Flame for zero out of war plus one. Which was very <laughs> That's really obnoxious. That was, Pete, that, was, that was round one against Pete Ward, which was uh, a bit dirty, but... that is uh, that is disgusting, man. That feels like the old Bolt and Saber. Uh, yeah, nothing. Was, that's what I was thinking of Hamish was your uh, your Bolt and yeah, your uh, were you just like, yep, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro. Uh, cool sideboard. Yeah, we'll go to the sideboard stuff. So this is kind of the point where now we're going to be talking about particular matchups your strategy overall against most of the heroes is just basically all unload punch them in the face there's no um deviating from that strategy that they've got to deal with you that's that, that's the th thing so your sideboard is all based around well it seems i'm seeing some defense reactions so we'll we'll start with that because we'll leave a little minimalism that that busted combination um for, it's the Icelander player. Is that is that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but the sink blows and that's all you got. What what point do you feel like you need to start tuning down the the aggression a little bit to put in these defensive cards? So sink blows are just for Guardians and Dorinthia. Okay. Um, because you need to reset Dorinthia every now and then when she her sword gets too big. Yeah. So okay. this helps you do the reset um, on her to stop the potential counters going up. And then against Guardians, they have really punishing on-hit effects that they're going to try and dominate through. Mm. And when they don't resolve their on-hit effects, their cards are a lot worse. So like a, a Spinal Crush coming in for 9 Dominate ends your turn if it's not stopped. But with a Sink Blow in your arsenal and your chest piece, it just didn't, it doesn't do anything. Okay. It's actually really bad. So. so my next question with this is that um, is... Dorinthia actually kind of a bit of a hard matchup for you because generally speaking, um, having this minimum amount of defense reactions is, well, it's, it's obviously not enough. You're never going to find this quick enough to deal with everything that they're doing. Is she quite tough to deal with? So I, I played a Dorinthia in, I think, round eight. So the one before the winning in. And it was the closest matchup I had out of all my matchups. Mm. I actually thought I was going to lose at one point because he had such a huge life lead on me. Um, but I was able to, with that all you got on a sink below, I was able to reset the Dawnblade. Right, and okay. Where he only came in for six, and then I came in for like 25, and then Tempo flipped back over again. Yeah, it's so it's not something that you're trying to manage all the way through. It's just something that you have an opportunity to sort of manage it. And because your deck is always active, you know, it's always live with damage, you just need yeah. to have one moment then just bring it all back in again okay cool um so that all you got is why is that specifically against someone could why would why would you run that and not fates What's so the... so that you got yeah i use it against Dorinthia. um it's a yellow zero cost so i can pitch it for kadachis if needed mm -hmm. and also against five because it breaks up the mask of momentum triggers okay cool so i just i guess i cycle a card from my hand it costs me no cards but I break their mass momentum. They got to reset and do mass momentum again. So it's just for the tempo play. It's really, really powerful against Fi. Okay. Cool. Um, the equipment. Move on. Actually, no, stop the equipment, man. We'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get this horrible thing out of the way. Belittle, oh, miss little miss them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are they in your deck? Well, they come in for one matchup. Yeah. Much. What matchup <laughs> is that? That'd be Icelander. Uh, okay. Uh, they're not yeah. so they <laughs> just send it there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is Icelander actually um a tricky matchup to deal with? Um if you didn't have Blittle and I'll, I'll sorry if I'm saying this bit for you, I imagine the Blittle thing is just so you can just push through the uh resources that they're trying to hamper you all the way through. Yeah. It's uh it's it's effectively five more blues in the deck. Mm. Um but only takes up two blue slots. And 
which is when you're in your nine blues, it bumps me up to effectively fourteen blues, um, which is a really, which is fine to be in against Icelander. Um, it's just an, it's just enough blues to not be too heavily impacted by tax, and yeah, you can just absolutely send it at them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, why do you run two copies of Blue Minimalism, George? Is there any particular reason? Just um, not really. Just like yeah. two. All right. <laughs> just, yeah, I, I guess if you do have a double bullet, or you can do a double search, so that makes sense to me. But yeah, it's just the um, it, the reasoning to the minimalism is usually you have two is because you can sometimes draw one in your hand mm. already, and you can find one. Um, yeah. Because what's the worst thing is when you find a blue and you got the minimalism in your hand already, that feels really bad. Mm. So I think I still would have two minimalisms just for the fact that you can have a little minimalism in the hand at the same time, and that makes a little a lot worse. Yeah, okay. oh, that if, makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah. If you didn't have Blit or Minimism, do you feel like the uh, Icelander matchup would be a little bit trickier? It's a lot harder. A lot harder. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think there are some Fi matchups that it's it's what I'm starting to find is that Fi seems to well from listening to yourself and uh, other great players as well that did particularly well with Fi, um, namely uh, Rob Catton because I played him in Nationals. Yeah. His deck is a bit different. It was a lot more Ember Blade, a lot more. Uh, he, he ran in the belittles and everything, but it seems like when I he, when he when I was playing up against him, his deck was very much geared to deal with Icelander really well, but struggled with Guardian. And then for you, you felt like this deck is really good against Guardian, but struggles against Icelander. Um, it seems like Fi is tuning into what type of control it wants to beat up better. Is that a fair assessment? And if it didn't have belittle, it's actually going to get it will struggle a little bit against the Ice Queen. Yeah, it, it without belittle, this this is a it's a unfavored matchup. Quite, I'd say like sixty five seventy percent favor to Icelander without belittles. As soon as that those five cards go in, though, that matchup goes to a lock list fifty fifty. Okay, so LSS, you know what you need to do. We'll move on to <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to the equipment trip. Do you want to? You can. Do you want to bang on about the uh, mask of the pouncing links? Jeez, yeah, that, I think that card. But as we are chatting about Icelander, I think for the equipment, maybe we should start about Arcane Lantern. Oh, I yeah, think that's I'll a put, really yeah. uh, interesting say. choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I assume it's obviously one Kadachi, one Lantern. Uh, when are you running the Lantern? Like, who, are you, which heroes are you running against? And, and why did you decide to go for uh, just, just, just Kano and Icelander? Yeah. Just the two wizards. Uh, the one, the one um, AB against Kano, I think, cuts like four or five damage from their huge turn. Mm. For, for one resource, which which you'll find to pitch, and then against uh, Icelander, when she does have her heavy tax turns, you can very easily have a resource left over, mm. and you must well just pitch it for AB. It's just safe damage when there's there's no reason not to. Um, the Kadachis are not actually that useful in the matchup. You very rarely use your weapons um, because they cost one or two usually against Icelander. Uh, you'd rather just use your attacks to have an eight go again. Mm. Yeah. And I think some people might look at this list and think, oh, the only sort of AB is Arcane Lantern. I'll run that into Viserai. Uh, oh. and that is not what you should be doing, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't waste, don't waste, don't waste your energy. Yeah. Just, I just know <laughs> AB just against Runeblade essentially is is the plan. Yeah, just 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 uh, block smart and don't let yourself get too low that you'll die to AB because you can't block it. Okay, that's 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 cool. Actually, I think that you made a good point there, Trip, to talk about Arcane Lantern first. I think I jumped ahead a bit with the uh, the mask, the links, and I just mask I, I could just see people picking it up and being like, "Why? Oh, I'll run AB against Mister Right, <laughs> and then just having one Kadachi and just just don't do that." No, but yeah, go ahead, Hamish. Yeah, so I was, um, so mask of Pouncing links, mask of momentum. So with mask of momentum, I can see that is in your equipment. I fit that is your main go to headpiece most of the time due to the fact that you've got Kadachis and you're always trying to push to get that um on hit draw effect, which is pretty pretty ninja of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when do you swap over to the mask of the pants and links? What sort of matchups do you use that for? When I need to either have a blowout, because I need to kill them really quickly. Okay. Or uh or I'm just not gonna get momentum res uh like to resolve enough. Uh, so old him, you really rarely get the momentum resolved because of Crown of Seeds and a Rampart stops your Kadachis really efficiently. Mm -hmm. So you just have Pouncing Links, and you you're saying to the old him, you start a 33 life because at some point that we're at Links will resolve for seven damage. Yeah, that is so. 
So you're just going to wait until that happens. So the old him starts at 33, and you say, I haven't got a helmet. <laughs> that's, the, that's the deal. That's the deal you start with against an old him. Is it, is that, is it so what would you run the links into specifically? Is it, is it old hymns, um Icelander? Icelander? Yeah, yeah Icelander, because I only run one Kadachi, so I don't need to mask. I don't need to chain links. Mm-hmm. Um, Kano, I think that's it. Okay. Just... So there, there was some chat. I, I would be interested in your opinion on this, George. Some people saying in the Phi Mirror, if you're going first, you should run links to present the first kill turn. I don't know if you've heard that or have any thoughts about running links in, in that matchup or at all. No, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like links in the matchup because yeah. momentum forces interaction from the opposite uh, Phi, and that's what you really want. So if you like, if you can present two chain link two two mass triggers in the same um, turn against the Phi, no matter if you're going first or second, that's that's still good enough, right? That's yeah. still good enough. Cool. Good um, Snapdragons, obviously, it's uh, Ninja Ninja's best uh, footwear since. Um, well, I don't know. Some people love the Crocs, but um, have you ever? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got. I don't know. I forgot what they're called. <laughs> the uh, tide flippers. Yeah, that the tide oh, flippers. No, tide tide flippers. flippers. Yeah, the flippers, Crocs. Yeah. yeah. Crocs. I've never heard. <laughs> Have you not? That so that's the first no thing. I hear what boots you're on about then. Oh right, the the, 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 t- the tide flippers. <laughs> so, um, you've you just opted to just stick with the uh, Snapdragon scalers over the tide flippers. Um, is there? Uh, Massive reason why I can imagine it's well, Snapdragons is really easy to explain. Have you tried the time flippers? Yeah, it doesn't work on Snatch. Oh, that's it. Right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it really work on Snatch, so it's not coming yeah. in. Um, you've got Tiger yep. Strike Shuko as well. Um, is that uh, I've seen some mixed res- mixed opinions about t- Tiger Strike Shuko. Um, what's what's your take on it? Anyone who doesn't like it in these sort of lists are wrong. These yeah. sort of lists, <laughs> sure. Is it? Yeah. Is, I'm trying it's, to. It's busted. It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'm not. It I'm not the five player. Two, and it gives you plus one damage a turn. I might be just. I might be just <laughs> be spreading rumors here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it. You can trigger it nearly every turn in this sort of deck. Um, really, really often you trigger it because of the Phoenix Flame plus a finisher, or you play it with the red, yellow brandish. Um, there, there are so many ways to trigger the Shukos, and then sometimes the other part of the text is really relevant. Um, amazing card. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Good. Um, we'll move over to the chess pieces now. Your main deck is always Flame Scale Furnace. Do you ever use yeah. the Flame Scale Furnace, or is it just a? Uh, uh, is it? Oh yeah. Oh, you do. Really okay. annoying. Really annoying for old him. Old him hate it because they can't ice react you to your last card. You hold your you hold your Kadachis until later on in the chain, mm. and then when they come in when they're coming in to ice react you, you go ah, pitch for furnace, Kadachi Kadachi Phoenix Flame. It's right. really annoying. Yeah, <laughs> no, and it's three more health effectively, isn't it? You know, just yeah, a, a good, it blocks, a good block. it, yeah, it blocks their it blocks their on hit effects, and it plays around ice react. Really good. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I was saying, Hamish, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. One of the, the nerfs to Viserai was obviously losing Blood Chief Skeletor, but also losing that temper block of two and one. Like, I, I guess not very often one, but a, that relevant two block, being able to throw a Shuko and Furnace or even Shuko and Mask at the end, in the end game to block out a four is, is, is really nice. It, it, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a huge deal. I think a lot of people, and I think it's the meta at the time probably not so much now but i think it was just being able to have um something that you can just throw six armor at something at one point in the game you know which i know that you know you wouldn't do that because everything of yours blows up a bit more but being Mm. able to have six armor presented is kind of huge right you're you're not you're not too you you start off with uh you know warrior levels of armor i know that again the 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 two of them will explode but still just to, on a pinch just to be a go i need an emergency get out of jail free card just i'm gonna throw all this at, at this at this situation is very very strong so i can imagine that's why flame scale furnace is yes. why momentum is great as well compared mm. to pants and links is that extra two life that you gain because as soon as people get to like sub 10 life you're never resolving momentum again so it just becomes a two block yeah 
Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. this is the great thing. Mask and Shiko, they they do their thing and then they block too. Like, what more could you ask for? Like, you get value out of it and then you even get to block at the end. Yeah. Lynx is obviously, like George just said, Lynx doesn't block too. Because if you're not, well, you really should be using Lynx. Um, if you have to block with it, things are probably not going well. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah. it, it's just Ninja is surprisingly bulky these days. Like, and I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> And then we'll end with the spring tunic. When does the spring tunic come in? Um, spring tunic is, I think I'm putting it in for Kano's, like Wizards again. And then here is, I don't respect their on hits. So like Levia, Rhyna, Bolton, Dromai. So anyone who has no real on hit effects, the, the resource from the tunic is, is really good. Hey, Wow. That's us going through all that we've been through all the cards. We've been through some of the matchups. So um, again, you've kind of a, a very straightforward punch in the face sort of hero. Um, is there any matchups that you, apart from when you said Icelander, but you've got Belittle in it? But is there any particular matchups that you have? I you're quite worried about in general. Like people, if people want to pick this up, take this to their nationals or whatever. What have they got to really worry about? I don't think any matchup is below 50%. I think you're pretty 50 50 into to the worst thing possible, which is why deck's so good. Right. Um, okay. But the ones that are at that 50 50 are like Bravo um, and Icelander. They're the ones that I'm most scared of. Old him, I've now. But there is there is quite a direct way you can deal with old him, the deck. Um, you need to put the reps in for it. Uh, I don't think you can pick this up and just play against old him because you'll lose. What sort what of things you've... you got to keep an eye out when, like, what are you repping to do? What is what sort of things are you trying to learn against Oldham? You need to play around their ice reacts properly and their earth reacts. Um, how when you can take frostbites, when you can't take frostbites, when you're like committing to a big turn and not committing to a big turn, because every time you do these things and you gain an extra one or two damage, they add up. And in the in the um, Oldham matchup, that one or two damage every now and then really is the difference between winning and losing because hmm. you always end those games at low life yeah okay fair enough uh trip is there any questions that you want to sling i think yeah george like my main question is um do you see any five players doing things that you like a, it's a very different fi deck to what was going around with all the draconic stuff and do you, do you think that deck is is fine like what why do you think this deck it seemingly is performing better than that just straight draconic deck. Like, what is this deck doing that's different and giving you that edge in in your matchups? I took that deck to the Pro Tour. Um, mm -hmm. I took Draconic Fighter to the Pro Tour, and it was fine. It was a good deck. Um, I don't hate the deck at all. It's it requires more. There's more cards that you want to really want to see in that matchup. Like, you need you need to see Spreading Flames every time you draw a hand. Oh, there's no Spreading Flames. Oh, got away, got away, got away. We just don't care in this deck. You just all your cards are the same card, so you just play your hand every time, and your hand's always great. <laughs> it's very rare you draw a hand and you go, oh, this hand is pretty mediocre. And I get to run a lot less blues than Draconic Fi, so Draconic yeah. Fi runs towards near 20 blues. So you, you get fatigued way quicker in Draconic Fi than you do in this deck, because it takes a lot longer to get to your blue, heavy blue pitch. It just, okay. um, yeah, it just lasts for longer in a fatigue matchup, and it doesn't require more key cards. So there's no more, there's less play around cards. It just, I, don't, I think it's just more powerful. Wow, well, it's a fantastic deck. Um, after being uh, playing against it a couple of times after you've won your UK nationals, I can officially say that I, uh, I despise this deck with a passion. <laughs> <laughs> but purely because it's it's well crafted. And um, you've done it's an absolutely fantastic job. You've uh, definitely shown case the power level of what I believe the new aggro decks can deliver because it seems like we started off with a pretty controlly meta. But I think you've shown this is actually some really powerful aggro in there. So well done, George. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, my plan was to put old him back to the drawing board. So if people just start repping the same old him decks, you're gonna have a really bad time, I think. Because this is a really good deck against those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, patron questions. Land on that. But just before the oh. patron question, George, just to to say, like, obviously, last year UK nationals, you finished second place. Um, the final. Yeah. Matt Polk. Like, last how does you, it, how does it feel to have <laughs> Mad, 
taken it home and, and won it this year. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, I, I had this so, this fear, this dread that I was going to lose the final again. Oh, <laughs> no. what, you, what you don't want to do is finish second twice. <laughs> 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 um, and then w- winning it, I it was unbelievable. I was so happy. I didn't really get super like shouty, let's go sort of thing when I won. Um, but then I couldn't go to sleep that night. I was like up to like four in the morning. Yeah. Um, just just buzzing. It was just, just a great feeling. Just just nice to say I got a national champion. It just feels good. You are the yeah. UK national champion, George Roger. It's very much. It's 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 an amazing, amazing, amazing accomplishment, especially as well from. I, I I would say that last year we was it was a good field, but this one was definitely an even tougher field than last year. And to pull it out and win in the toughest field is um even more credit dude so yeah we i mean we have people now so i think we currently hold first place in elo for both constructed and limited in the uk we will hold on to that title as long as we can until the national season's (laughs) over (laughs) (laughs) yeah the uk is a really really tough environment like the quality of people there was unbelievable i didn't i didn't have any games where i was like there's a huge skill discrepancy between myself and my opponent this year yeah it's really good Absolutely. So, should we should we should we do some fun Patreon questions? Yeah, because the I patrons this, decided this, to not give us some. I want this Warhammer fun. champion question, right? Okay. <laughs> Can you? So the question is: <laughs> This is nothing to do with fire. Uh, was Hamish actually known as the better Warhammer champion player? Um, and I think you you might need to explain that question. Go on, George. You you you. Let's talk about, about Warhammer champions on this bad, on this bad <laughs> podcast. So I've actually known Hamish for a few years, and it wasn't through Flesh and Blood. Uh, we, we we played another game, a little old game called Age of Sigmar Champions, which was a great game while it was alive. Yeah. Um, and Hamish was definitely one of the better players in the UK. I would. For... I wouldn't say I was the better one of the better players. I think I was the most. Uh, I was the one talking the most. I suppose. Pose. I don't know. I, I don't think it was more, much more as results. It was just probably just more <laughs> content more than anything. Um, I, I, I think you were very good, Hamish. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then in comes George. Comes out of nowhere, <laughs> left field. He's he he jo- he jumps into an event and brings a goblin deck or some, of some kind. And, <laughs> yeah. and then I was just like, what the fuck? What, what, what is this? And then um, and then he proceeded to just absolutely just like do really well in these particular events with this goblin deck and then i was just like keeping an eye on this guy and then um, <laughs> and then i think that's what formed the the you, you the the rivalry of events we, we would we would bump into each other at events and yeah. uh, definitely making sure that um it, one person has to be on like it doesn't even you didn't even need to win <laughs> i was like oh, i didn't win this event where was george i well if i find it third oh. I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I can go bad. I can go bad. And then George gets a top eight, and I'm in eight, ten. He's like, "Oh, where did you come? Oh, I didn't make it. Damn, damn. No, yeah. So that that was our that was our history. So even and when you moved over to Flesh and Blood, yeah, definitely that was um, me going. Oh, it's back. Rematch. It's back. And uh, now we've got a. Uh, so that so now we've got a UK national champion. My my nemesis is now the UK national. champion champion so uh, i drove home with great speed so i can definitely stay rolling around in bed going i can't believe it i'm joking <laughs> i was damn it. it's what you said <laughs> it's it, to be fair whenever we meet up and we're slamming games like i i was just even though george is the nemesis i'm actually actively also just secretly just rooting for the dude because i just know that he's an absolutely bonkers player and to have a i'm kind of just thinking for me as well for the warhammer champions it's just like yes yes there's this warhammer champion crew dominating flesh and blood <laughs> <laughs> that that, oh, that yeah. does feel that feels really that feels really cool as well so yeah there you go that was um i but, always the, enjoy my matches with you They're quite, always good fun. the answer is yes sh- sh- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sharif had another question, which I think is quite interesting because the answer could just be not at all. But it says, how close were you to taking Bravo, uh, which is the hero you played at last year's UK Nationals, and what got you to settle on Fi? My Bravo deck is literally behind me at the moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, 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 it went with me to Nationals. I had it all ready to go. 
it was so close. Um, wow, really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that, that's that's interesting. That is interesting. Really, really close. The whole deck's ready to go. What happened? Uh, yeah, why'd you choose fire in the end then? Um, so one of the other guys I played with called Kashi, he, um, he, he we were talking about because I was really unsure. I was like, man, fire's been really great in like um, practice and stuff, but what if that's just not how it plays in a tournament? And then he was like, well, just look at your win. He's like, he's like, he's like, you're being an idiot. The deck's absolutely insane. You should just take <laughs> it. Stop being so stupid. Brava's a terrible deck. This is great. And then I was like, yeah, but what if it's not? And then he was like, show me your win rate on Talisha. And we looked at the win rate. I was like, yeah, for 100 games, there's an 80% win rate on Fi. Maybe it's a pretty good deck, you know? <laughs> That's great. Was your 80%. Bravo deck, did that have anything sort of majorly spicy in that as well? Or was that just, um, was it kind of just Bravo? I just, unfortunately, Bravo is pretty solved. So mm. there's nothing super spicy. It was just really consistent. Like the only card you may say slightly spicy in it was blue fiendas fighting spirits okay um cost three blocks the cheap card gain a health yeah yeah just blue cost three and stuff it was just like it ticks all the boxes and then it was really good against rosetta specifically yeah and and then also it helped with break points against Fi. um it was just a fine card that's like the closest to spice in the deck yeah okay fair enough um <laughs> The next question is from Jack Raven, and he says, why are you incapable of hitting Jack Raven? Uh, is this <laughs> true? <laughs> oh, I can answer that one. That's because Jack Raven played Prism when I was on guard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty, yeah, that pretty much answers that one. So. <laughs> You're glad uh, Jack Raven wasn't at, at Nats. <laughs> yeah. But he can't play Prism anymore. Oh, no. So. No, that's true. He, oh. he did have Icelander. He was running the Icelander. Yeah, it, it, to be fair, he does seem to end up on the deck that beats my deck. He just every finds, time. That's probably his strategy. What's George playing? I'm counterpicking. <laughs> I remember trying uh, to troll him to not play Prism because I was. I kept telling him I was going to bring Katsu to a, to, a, to a road to nationals. I was like, oh, I've got this amazing Katsu deck. It just destroys Prism, man. You gotta be careful. You bring your prism deck, and he's like, "Oh, show me your katsu," and I'll just flip out Starbo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Darren of uh, Darren Fame uh, says, Who, "What will your first edict as uh, or edict as national champion be, and why?" <laughs> I'm liking all these tech questions. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> I did pre-warn you. My first evening. <laughs> um, God, it's gonna be something against prison players, isn't it? Um, I think prison players just need to reflect on all the pain that they've they've caused Guardian players for the last year and a half, you know, and just it's just a, they need to apologise for their their actions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, public apology. <laughs> <laughs> all the prison players need to just show up and openly just scream, "I'm sorry" in the street. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is a good edict. That is a good. And edict. then they should all be forced to play Azalea for like one. Yeah. <laughs> See how they like it when yeah. they got to play attack. They just feel miserable to play. <laughs> uh, that was all the uh, patron questions that we didn't already answer in the the deck text. The other ones were about like Icelander matchups and things like that. But I think that covers it from the the patrons. So. Uh, Anything else, uh, Hamish, that you want to um, say before the end? I'm all good. I, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. I'm all good. good I'm all good. <laughs> I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I think I was trying to say George and good at the same time. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah George, is there any shout outs you want to do before we sign off? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so so um, my, my, one of my shouts is going to be to to Baz the Bard. Oh. He does my... Uh, my, my man's been repping me now for, for a long time. UK number two, he says it every time on one of his streams. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so yeah, he's a great one for just seeing like local armories. Obviously, it's a great local armory scene. I'm there. So, you know. That's the reason I don't go. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'll just get handed. No, yeah, Manuscrew's top, man. Manuscrew's top. Baz is also just, oh, I'm so glad you said him. Yeah. 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 And then just the, the guys that I just did all my testing with, just all being really great. So, uh, we have this server uh, where we've all the uh, the best players have been formed, and we uh, we don't play flesh and blood on it. 
Uh, right. <laughs> we play League of Legends. Oh, the League of Legends server. <laughs> the League of Legends server, yeah. one. I've heard about this. <laughs> the, the, the UK League server uh, now holds the national, the national champion, the Pro Tour champion, so many calling finalists, <laughs> and we don't play any Flesh and Blood. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you win any games of League? <laughs> You've got all these top players, and do you just get handed on League all the time? Oh, no, I'm one of the better ones. Ooh. So we, we do, like, we call captain's draft, so a couple of people will um, they'll, they'll choose, cap, they'll, they'll be the captains. They, we actually bet on it now, so money gets involved now, and you draft your team of players. Then you draft the champions they're playing, like a pro game. And then you just play and just get absolutely battered or battle someone. It's great. Yeah. That sounds really fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is really fun. Um, we haven't done it much recently because we were all testing for nationals. But um, for, for Pro Tour, yeah, there was so little Pro Tour prep done for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Matt did like hardly any Pro Tour prep. He just played League of Legends every evening. And then won it. So clearly it works out, right? That's the way to do it, yeah. <laughs> Transferable skills, clearly. From to, uh, Fair enough, man. Uh, George, thank you so much for joining us on Push the Point. It's been really good to have you on and to talk through the deck. Uh, I see. Oh, wait. You didn't have any more shout outs, did you? I just cut you off completely. No, 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 no. Yeah. That'll do. No one else. Bye. I'll do. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, we've got some more stuff coming out uh, soon. Uh, <laughs> Hamish is just. N- continually knocking out interviews i don't know how he manages it so subscribe and we'll have more coming soon but again thank you george and goodbye i guess (laughs) how do you end these